26 people are dead across eight states as a result of Tropical Storm Irene, which swept through the eastern United States this past weekend. But thanks to some heroic efforts and evacuation orders, that number is lower than it could have been. Firefighters in Cranford, New Jersey paddled more than 60 people to safety from the five-foot floodwaters on Staten Island. In addition to fatalities, the storm left a wide swath of costly destruction. Many streets and homes were flooded and left without power through New York and New England. In New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut alone, a combined number of almost two and a quarter million people are without power. The storm's cost for New York City alone is calculated to be around $6 billion, and the national cost could reach $40 billion. President Barack Obama said yesterday that the storm had not been as strong as he had feared, but added, quote, the impacts of this storm will be felt for some time, and the recovery effort will last for weeks or longer." End quote. A 10-year-old boy died last night after he was hit by a pickup truck while riding his bike. The Highway Patrol says the boy rode his bike into the path of the pickup on State Highway 57 about a mile west of Fort Totten, North Dakota. The patrol has yet to identify the boy or 46-year-old Cheyenne w woman who was driving the pickup. Authorities have identified the victim of a rollover that killed Valley City Man last Thursday. North Dakota Highway Patrol Sergeant Josh Rude says 34-year-old Joseph Hedgemanic was traveling south on Barnes County Road 21 when his vehicle left the roadway, entered the ditch, and began to roll. Hedgemanic wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was partially ejected from the car. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Meanwhile, the patrol says investigation into the accident remains ongoing. The Federal Emergency Management Agency says the deadline left to register for federal disaster assistance is quickly approaching. So far, authorities say nearly 300 million state and federal dollars have been doled out to almost 10,000 North Dakotans who have already registered with FEMA for assistance due to flooding. Hay prices are soaring due to a drought in the southern part of the Midwestern United States. Many ranchers in much of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas are faced with the decision of paying the inflated prices or selling their cattle. Some parts of Texas haven't felt a cool shower for almost a year, and forecasters say the drought could last through next month. The drought has also reduced water available for the herds. Fortunately, beef prices have remained high, otherwise the situ situation would be even more desperate. There have certainly been diverse amounts of weather across the United States recently. Jessica Gallstaff has more on the type of weather we can expect here in Jamestown. Jessica? Thanks, Caleb. This afternoon will be mostly sunny with a high near 81. Tonight, there's a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Otherwise, it will be mostly cloudy with a low around 57. Tuesday, there's a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms with a high near 77 degrees. Tomorrow night, there will be mostly cloudy with a slight chance of rain persisting through the night. Wednesday will be partly sunny, but Thursday we again have a 30-40% to 40 chance of rain. Friday should be partly cloudy, but Saturday could be a little wet with a 20% chance of showers. Now back to you, Caleb. Thanks, Jessica. It was a busy weekend for the Jimmies as the football, volleyball, and men's women's soccer teams were all on the road. The Jimmy football team won in overtime at South Dakota Mines and Tech 23-20. The Jimmies were significantly helped out by Brad Lint, who had 184 yards passing and two touchdowns, while Lance Johansson added 89 yards rushing. Zach Jovig had nine total tackles and JT Petch had an interception. Overall, the Jimmies had 386 yards in their victory. They next play Wisconsin Stout on September 10th in Jamestown. The Jimmy's men's soccer lost at Dakota Wesleyan 0-1. Dominic O'Connor had three shots on goal and Tom Cook had three saves for the Jimmy's, but it was Nick Sterling's goal for Dakota Wesleyan at 43-25 that was the deciding goal. The, next, the men's next game is at Morningside College September 4th. The women's soccer team also played Dakota Wesleyan and came away with a tie after a double overtime thriller. Hannah Langseth and Gabriel Lane both scored for the Jimmies, while Caleb Bile had eight saves. The girls' next game is also September 14th against Morningside College. Volleyball won three out of four matches at the Red Raider Classic in Orange City, Iowa. They lost in straight sets to their first opponent, Doan College, 
but rebounded with wins against Concordia University, Hastings College, and Dort College. Some top performers for the Jimmies were Jada Mickeljohn, who averaged almost 22 assists per match, Katie Zent and Sarah Becker, who each averaged double-digit kills per match, and Katie Lee, who averaged over 20 digs a match. The Jimmies' next match is September 2nd and 3rd at the Embry-Riddle Invite in Daytona Beach, Florida. They have a 4-1 overall record. Thank you for joining me, Jamestown, this 29th day of August 2011. I'm Caleb Ruby. Tune in to JCTV again tomorrow when we'll once again connect the campus with the community.